So we'll get to our guest. I, ha- I have a little uh, clip. I'll play um, one of her clips before uh, we introduce her. So I will play that right now. Join me in my love affair with freedom. We declare sovereignty as free people. Don't police me. Statism is death. We see a threat on our life, liberty, and property. Instead of privacy, we have permission. It's about control, isn't it? Instead of life, we have granted existence. It's about the incremental eradication of freedom. Brave the world. Hijack the hijacker. Create your own reality. We are not victims of culture. We are culture. We are the Hydra. Cut the head off. I dare you. If something is certain, run the other way. Anarchy is accepting that we don't have all the answers. More so, anarchy is accepting that no one should have all the answers. But you cry, prove anarchy works. And we say, welcome to anarchy, population everyone. This is not utopia. This is not a vision. This is not a system. This is not a solution. We'll leave all that to the dictators. Allow me to escape the feedback loop. Allow me to escape the feedback loop. So, yes. <laughs> Like a trailer into my mind, <laughs> but it's good. It's I, I love that, and I I I love your views um, because a lot of the anarchists. Uh, and welcome Julia to the show, by the way. <laughs> sorry Thank for, you. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> it's okay. But uh, it happens. yeah, a lot of the uh, anarchist view because I mean we we have a lot of an I mean none of us are anarchists, but I have a lot of anarchist friends, and probably the closest. Uh, I guess we'll say label. I don't like labels, but, but I'm closer to more anarchist views than any anything else. Uh, I'm not on on par, but with all of them. But I like how you. Uh, I like your uh, the way that you handle. it. I like your view on it. Uh, it's, it's definitely closer. Yeah, to, the lab- uh, the labels are kind of tricky, right? It's yeah. dangerous and isolate. It's it can I, be isolationist, but at the end of the day, I mean, for, I guess, self-promotion purposes, you need to call it something or else no one will sure. understand what you're talking about. No, absolutely. I, I, I totally yeah. I, I agree with that. And, and I uh, mean, with, with anarchism, too, the way I, I define it in many different ways, but um, recently I've been thinking about the concept of how the difference between anarchists or that label or people who claim to be anarchists in this community is all the progressive liberal status types, even though we don't like them, even though we disagree with them, we still want them to have their freedom. That's the difference between us and them because they don't want us to have that. They hate us and the, they actually want something done about it. We hate them too, but we still want them to have their rights and freedom, and we would not care if they lived freely and did their own thing at all, as long as it doesn't affect us. Okay. Sure. Do you go Absolutely. by a particular kind of anarchy? Like, like there's always yeah, anarcho um, and communist syndicalist. I, I like I like the older term of individualist anarchist. Yes. Yeah. Which. Yeah. You. yeah. I like that one. Um, I'm a huge fan of Anson Belgarigu, and he kind of, I'm sure Ayn Rand must have read him because he talks about socialism in an, in a very individualistic way. You know, he sure. says there is only the self um, and there is no, there's no social good. There is no, you know, public property. There is no shared common good. All of that is imagined crap. All there is is the human being in your selfish, and if you say you're not, then you're a liar and you have an agenda. And he puts it in, I mean, this guy wrote this in the 1700s, so the language is quite different, but it says the same thing that Ayn Rand says years and years and years later. Yep, absolutely. Sorry, I was... I got I got a bunch of people messaging me. I'm trying to uh, shut Facebook down so uh, this stuff's going off. All right. Anyway, we're good. Yeah, but the, um, the thing with socialism, you you got to share, and people just don't want to share, so it never well, yeah, works. Same same thing yeah. with Facebook. You got to share. 
<laughs> Nobody well, yeah, wants to it, share, man. Who was oh, yeah. it? Who was it that said uh, communism, communism will never work because people like stuff? Like Frank Zappa or somebody <laughs> said that. You know, people like owning <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah people think, love their stuff. They got, yeah, and actually, they the, most, the most uh, materialistic people I know are people from California. Like those freaking liberal, the liberal mm. progressives. They love their stuff. They preach like... They preach all this equality and socialism and spreading the wealth. Go to one of these people's houses. It's filled with crap. It's just filled with materialistic goods. And then, you know, when there's an economic economic downturn, they don't know what to do with themselves because they've always frivolously spent their money. Yep. They don't know the how the yep. economy works. They don't know how to save. And they just think people, like, they grow up with a silver spoon in their mouth so communism is a great concept to them because they've never been poor. And then yep. I find that, like, personally offensive because my family and I come from a country that had communism. We know what it's like to be poor. We know what it's like to be immigrants. Like, And then you have these horrible people from California who have grown up with everything, like, just handed to them, talking about spreading the wealth. Yeah, I'll take hmm. some of your wealth, honey. I'll take it. That's fine. My PayPal account is the same as my email, <laughs> yeah. so send it to me, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're speaking of, <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, you're speaking of California, and uh, in November I'm actually moving from Maine to California. Uh, Why winter. on earth? Maine well, is well, so no, beautiful. No. no. I've and the lobster and the blueberries. <laughs> uh, you don't have to tell me that. I've lived here for 30, 34 <laughs> years. I do know. I'm going there for the winter. Um, I have some opportunities out there that I'm going to go do. I'm going to be there for four months. You know, it's, it'll be a nice little trip. I'm not going yeah. to live there forever. I'm just going out there. So I'll see. I'm going to see everything firsthand that you're talking about anyway. And, and of course, I have oh, friends yeah. out there. And have they fun. say the, They say the <laughs> same thing. They say the same thing that you say. Um, but you know, I, I do. I have you know, I got a lot of friends out there. I'm just going out there. It's a good setup for me. Uh, you know, I'm not going out yeah, there to look for work. Unfortunately, California is where like a lot of things happen. So I don't yeah. blame you. I mean, I know That's, a lot of my friends live there too. Right. <sighs> it, it, you know, I don't want to live there forever. No, that's. I'm just. I'm gonna go there. Uh, you know, I have some projects that I'll be working on out there. Uh, me and my friend uh, from Boston are we're we're driving. We're doing a road trip out there. We're going to be making some stops at certain cities on the way, and we're filming a documentary. And uh, we'll be meeting up with uh, certain activists, you know, and and, and uh, doing interviews for the documentary and stuff. So, I mean, it's it's a whole big thing. It's like it's like one big four month project. Uh, I have a. A reality show that I'll be working on with it's not your typical reality show. Uh, I can't talk too much about it, but it's not when you think reality show, it's not that. Hey, uh, I love reality some, TV. Don't, you, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> no, okay. Well, this, you'll probably like this because it's it's going to be entertaining. Uh, I won't. I'm not going to speak too much of it because um, I'm not supposed to say anything yet. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I I think. Uh, yeah, I, I, when it's done, I'll make sure that you uh, you get it. You get to, <laughs> I'll give you the link to it so you can check it out. Sounds good. But, <laughs> so, all right. Um, before we get like too in depth, um, we uh, of course I, I'm familiar with your work anyway, but I just happened like it was like last week. Um, I was going, you know, I was scrolling through my news feed. And I saw, like, oh, well, you're on the Alex Jones uh, show. Well, we're not here. We're not uh, Alex Jones fans. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. It's okay. I, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's. I don't know. I have my opinion on Alex Jones. Uh, no, you know, let's I'm do not, this. Yeah, Tell okay. Me. Good. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so I, I, I <laughs> don't normally want... <laughs> No, I do. I do want to know. I mean, you did a great job, by the way. Uh, out of, I mean, I haven't seen. I, I did used to listen to Alex Jones uh, a while back, but it was. Uh, I've. Not, I don't. Of course, I don't see it all the time, but I've never seen him. Uh, get, he gave you his whole desk and everything. But this is. I was. I got a question for you. Um, 
Yeah. He started he started to get some callers, you know, with some legit questions and uh if I felt like he couldn't honestly answer them without making himself look bad. So then the next thing you, you know mean the the, fem- to- the FEMA camp thing? <laughs> yeah, 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 all that stuff. I it, it, yeah. yeah. But I'll you'll you'll understand what I'm getting at right here. Um so he goes to his commercial break or whatever, and then he c- comes back, and Alex is gone, and you're sitting there. So I'm just kind of curious. Did he just not want to, like, have to answer all that stuff? Oh. And did he just, like, leave you there with all the callers, like, just to, like, fend for no, yourself? No, no, I don't know. I think I think you're having, like, a biased interpretation. Um, <laughs> the only question, the only bad caller we had was that dude that was challenging him on FEMA the, camps, and well, I mean... Okay, well, I kind of I had fast right. forward through a little bit of it, and then I saw like it went to a break because I wasn't. I mean, it was a whole three hour show. I was just trying to get to your. Yeah, the, he, your uh, part. Yeah, yeah. After that, we just had we didn't really have really that many questions. We had people coming uh, calling in with input, and the questions were pretty. Questions were pretty basic. Um, Alex was really like the whole time. He had somewhere to be. He had some personal things he had to work out. And uh, we were supposed to do dinner and stuff, like, with the crew, but it just, like, didn't happen because of that, and he felt pretty bad over it. But, so, it it wasn't anything like, oh, I don't want to answer questions anymore, you do it. It was, he actually did have something to do. (laughs) And it sucked because, you know, I was in town, but, you know, um, he, yeah, it's just personal things because he he was going to do, like, dinner with, like, Cody Wilson and I as well a few nights before, but he was traveling. The guy's busy, man. But, so is he, uh, is he cool really, 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 really busy? Yeah. Yeah, he's super busy. He's going through like st- uh, he's you know he's human being. He it's not just of work course. for him, right? And I I've I've been on the show before, but not in studio. And we always vibe pretty well. We just I, you know Alex is this like big bulldog, right? And he's like quite <laughs> abrasive and you know very he just like yep. <laughs> he, well he's got a lot of uh, passion and a lot of sure. experience under his belt and I'm, you know, I can be very aggressive too but I'm good at, you know, as a female, I'm good at gauging people and balancing them out. So <laughs> I take this like very feminine approach when I do shows okay. with him because it's a, we balance each other out well that way and you could see that with one of the callers where he gets he kind of like gets really annoyed with him and I just reel mm-hmm. it back in and like just ends the conversation because it was going nowhere. Fair enough. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yep. That's well, yeah, Alex, enough, I mean, whatever your, I did whatever have to your ask opinion that. of Alex is, like, <laughs> I just want to state, like, he's the real deal, man. Like, he is, you see what you get, like, and you get what you see. Like, dude's not, there's no show. That's just Alex. It's So that's very refreshing for me because sometimes you meet people and they're very, I don't know, you just, like, don't expect them to be the way they are. But Alex is, like, 100% right. the way he is. It's kind of fun. I guess I have a question. Um, Do, do you think Alex worries a lot? Is he the worrying type? When I, before I started doing any of this, um, my boyfriend at the time, who introduced me to Alex about, damn, uh, 10 years ago, he sent, he's this guy from England, and he sent me this, like, we have it, like, this long distance relationship, and he would send me these d- ripped DVDs of, you know, music and the concerts and stuff, and on one of them he put, Alex, the Alex Jones show, but ten years ago, Alex Jones show, where it's just like Alex sitting in like this dark room with a curtain behind him, like like re- recorded on this old camera, and he's just like ranting about the occult and uh, secret societies. <laughs> so I've been, you know, and and then we were li- we we were listening to Alex for ages, and I would always ask my boyfriend, uh, I would say, oh, do you think like when he's like, with his wife? You know, he's just, like, talking about this nonstop, and she's just like, Alex, please relax. Baby, go to sleep. Like, <laughs> I, I think fun. dude I think dude doesn't stop. Like, I think I, I think right. Alex has a hard time relaxing, and that's just, you know, he's on this earth with a purpose, a very straightforward purpose, and that's what he does. And I almost feel bad for him because he's one of those people whose minds just don't stop working. I can see that. Yeah, I can. I get I can. that way too sometimes, especially at night. Yeah. Your mind just doesn't stop racing. Uh, I know Penn yeah. Jillette has talked about it. It's like yeah. almost a personality uh, 
trope or something. Okay. Well, all right. So, all right. Um, you you lived in Russia. Uh, when, when did you uh, just to get some sort of little background? Uh, when did you leave Russia? And uh, I, I haven't looked into your background too much. I didn't look into the, your background or anything. Um, I figured yeah, you, I you left could, in ninety seven. Okay, and what were, what were your what were your motives for leaving? Um, my daddy had one of the first businesses after the collapse in the Soviet Union, and um, okay. he just saw it being co-opted by the mo- local mafias, which is a very normal thing that happens there. As soon as you start making sure. money, you get a target on your back, and people basically steal your business away from you. And they have a very, they have very subversive ways of doing it. Um, and you literally can't, you, you know, in Russia you can't call the police. Like, there's no law, there's no court system that's functional because of the bribery that goes on. Right, right. So, yeah, basically, it it was funny. We were going to move to a new house, and we had the model of the house all built out and stuff. And then my father hears of the po- finally the possibility of opening up to move to either Canada, Australia, or America. And he went to one of these, you know, like when they send you like a, a timeshare invite and like you get a free vacation and like you go to the timeshare thing and they like pitch yep. you all those scams. Sure, yeah. So it was kind of like that, except it was just like a little conference. He, you know, he goes to Moscow or whatever for the weekend and like sits in one of these like, we we can help you get out of the country things. And he's heard of them before and a lot of them are scams or a lot of them start out legit and then scam you later. And, but you know, he's like, well, we have the money. Let's just risk it and try. So, you know, he gives this dude like a large chunk of money. Um, they do all our papers, blah, blah, blah. And miraculously it wasn't a scam and we got out of the country. <laughs> uh, and then wow. if you, I think a few months after. So what happens is these companies, they put a couple people through so that they build up credibility, and then they, the last like session of people, once there's more, they run away with the money. So that happened to that company eventually. Uh, it happened to loads of other companies that my, our, some of our friends got screwed with it. Our other friends also got out of the country, went to Germany and stuff. So it was kind of like a lottery, and we won. Wow. And that was 97, you said? Yeah. That's pretty good. Chances of winning the lottery. (laughs) Yeah, it it was the best choice my dad ever made for us. Good, good. Can you... Go ahead, Mark. Can you kind of walk us through what got you into, uh, you know, kind of what you're doing now then? Uh, The process of elimination... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> process I mean, of elimination process of elimination yeah uh, everything else sucks like nothing else makes sense to me fair enough I just yeah you I mean I probably learned it from my own family they don't associate a label with, with their lifestyle but they've always done what they thought was right and what they Good. wanted to do without hurting uh-huh. others so I mean awesome. that's anarchism in my mind Mm-hmm. Well, good. I like I like anarchi- anarchism in your mind better than <laughs> a lot of my friends who are anarchists because we kind of call them cyber anarchists. But I I take that away from. I mean, I I separate them from actual anarchists. Um, I don't know. There's just you know people on Facebook they like to, they, they, they like to talk a lot, but they 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 talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And I like to see if I mean. You can be an anarchist. You 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 still got to walk the walk. I mean, if you're going to be an anarchist, or if you just you're someone who likes anarchist principles, which I would maybe relate myself with more because it's so much closer to my ideals. I just yeah. don't like to put a label it starts, on it. That's all. And it starts at home, you know. It starts in the family, like. I I believe in discipline and guidance and all of this, and I I believe in you know sometimes pushing your kids to do something they might not want to because they just don't know if they like it or not yet. I like that's that's all a balance. But at the end of the day, 
if parents only love you if you meet their expectations, that's, you know, that's conditional. And that means that also implies a lot of control and power games within your family. My family, to, in my family overall in my day-to-day lifestyle and choices, as long as I wasn't doing something overtly self-destructive, they let me do what I want. And, I mean, just imagine, like, like I mean, I finished university, I did all that, which they wanted me to do, and, I mean, it, it hasn't really benefited me in a direct way, I would say, but after that, you know, I just kind of bounced around, I did some small business stuff, and then I went really heavy into this, and, like, what do you, <laughs> most parents would freak out. Like, oh, wait, where are you going? You're going to go live in squats for a month? You're going to go to, con- like, are you going to an anarchist con? What is this? Like, my dad was just like, cool. That's awesome that you get to oh, travel. That's cool. <laughs> like, he literally, you know, and we have a small business, and as long as I was back for the winter and I could help them out, do whatever you want, you know, just be safe. And they got used to me uh, just kind of being away for months at a time and of course they love me and worry for me but they also learn to trust me and a lot of parents don't ever allow themselves to trust their kids because they're used to controlling them fully and this is the foundations of statism it's treating your citizens like little children they have to control yep well, well I kind of like your the state uh, raises your kid more, more than the parents <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah I know all about that being a single dad, I do have to deal with that. <clears throat> so do you do you homeschool or you their kids are at school? Uh no, I would love to homeschool. I, I'm all for it. Uh the unfortunate thing is here in the United States, uh the whole system obviously favors the mother. And uh, and I and, and I'm not saying it, I'm not going to sit here and like say anything bad about my son's mom because I'm not doing that. So don't take that like that. But uh, they, you know, it, it's mostly her choice. That's that's just how it is. It's it's unfortunate. Um, I would but, love to homeschool. Oh, school my so son. you split custody then? Not even. She has primary custody, and yeah, it's. Uh, oh, okay. So when you yeah. say single dad, I imagine that the child's with you most of the time. He he's with me all summer. I get him all summer. Uh, it's just oh, okay. The whole thing is, I have him every other weekend. So I basically yeah. for many years I had my son every other weekend. So think about that. How many days every other weekend is out of a year? That's not very much. But you know, and, and it's like, and I'm not against paying and helping you know, for, for the child, but I am also, and I'm sure you're against it, forced, you know, government getting into the business and enforcing uh, this stuff on the father or the mother or whatever it is. It's usually favorable for the mother. It's just how it is. But that's just government coercion. Um, when it goes through the state, oh, so they're, ma- would, they're making would you, money. Would- would you personally like to have your kid more often, but it, they favored your ex-wife to have the child? Well, she's not my ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, but yeah, yeah, oh, that, that, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, same thing, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to have him more often. Um, I would take him as much as I would. Ha- I would take full custody if I could. Um, but it's just, yeah. uh, it's, it's just a long process, and they just they usually favor the mother, and. Uh, you know, but I, I, I'm a loving, yeah, caring it's dad. A, it's tricky. It's it, tricky because I mean, ideally, you just want to you want to be civil and not get the yes. courts involved at all. Exactly. And unfortunately, people fall back to the courts now because it's I don't know, like you can get free if money. People, if, yeah, I mean, it's like the chicken and the egg. Like, okay, uh, yeah, do we need yeah. the courts because people can't be civil or people can't be civil anymore because the courts stick their nose right. in the business? Yep. Right? right, and it's uh, at this point, it doesn't matter anymore. It's a self-feeding loop. Right. Right? right. But, it, you right. know, uh, it's the legal, like, in this day and age, 
ideally you want people to just work it out. But then I also have a lot of sympathy for, you know, a woman who's left with a child and the dude runs off and then, you know, she doesn't have any support and she can't work. So then legally, I mean, or vice versa, right? I know women that run off and the man stays with the kid and, I mean, she should pay them. It's the justice system is messed up in every situation, in my opinion. It, it, it is. And if it's, it's like the the guys that run off, the fathers that run off, they're the ones that they don't really mess with. It's actually the 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 fathers that are there that are can, yeah, that, that it's hard, right? Child, it's hard that, to that, that actually are, punish people who suck. Yeah, <laughs> it's easy to punish people that are like available. Yeah, right. And that's what I deal with. And uh, I mean, I, I'm not saying I have it horrible or anything. I mean. You know, I mean, he's a daddy's boy. We, you know, we, you know, we have a good relationship. I, we're, I'm on good terms with his mom and everything. And that's the thing; it doesn't matter if we're on good terms. The state is still controlling it, and there's nothing. We, like she could go in there and be like, "Listen, I don't want you in our business anymore," and that, that can't happen. And that's what's well, messed up. Okay, so if you have him more often, they would like. What? No. Okay. I mean, how yes. would they even know? We could do that. We could do that. And the, the thing, like, yeah, if you you go to court, you go to mediation, and you can like, you know, get like you can do like I could go for primary custody, which I don't really want to do that to her because I'm I'm a, I'm a good dude. I'm a civil guy. Uh, he needs his mother just as much as he needs his father. So you know, I could you know it it it, it, it I don't know it, it's it's just such a long process and. It, it's it's too bad that like not not just me. It's too bad that any other families have to go through it, and it's too bad that you know the state gets involved and uh, tells you what to do and what you have to do here. And oh well, you know if you're like a couple months behind on child support, or if you lose your job, you get laid off or whatever, and you know they'll threaten you with locking you up and and throwing you in jail. You know even right. though you. Like, like but even my you, but situation, the, it's, but it's people who bring it's people who bring the state into it. I mean, the state doesn't even have to know that like you're split up. I mean, right. Well, you're, the, if the, you're not and, divorced, like the state doesn't need to be brought into it. Well, the, the the only reason why the state was brought into this in the first place was because I wanted to establish paternity. Because I, I'm not trying to get personal on here, but I I, I guess I kind of kind of got to explain this. But I had to establish paternity, and uh, I was the one going for that. It wasn't her because. You know there were circumstances with her other boyfriend and all this stuff, and uh, oh yeah. So I had to like if I didn't do that, I would have. I mean, when I saw pictures of him, I knew he was my son. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna just be like, no, screw that. I don't want anything to do with him. I'm like, no, I want paternity. I want you know some sort of custody or whatever of my child. And yeah, uh, you I'm wanted it to be legal this. in case in the future. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, right, and and, yeah. and I, I don't you know and I. It just it's it's what I had to do, and this was years ago, and I have a different thought process now, and I would have handled things a little bit differently. I mean, obviously, I still wanted to see my son, but I know there was other ways I could have handled it. Now that I, you know, have learned about all this stuff, but you know, like seven years ago, I didn't know this, so I did what I did. I just wanted to see my son. I missed the whole first year of his life, you know. So okay, I don't want to get any sob stories here. But let's, <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. No, it's nice to hear a dad that's like actually wants right. to be around. And I right. think I think people have kind of perpetuated this like runaway dad idea way too much. Yeah, it's probably a little, it happens a lot, but I think exaggerating it in movies and media and everywhere is just not beneficial to people. Like it's the same thing with like the the pedophile and rape and violence like uh, the more you play it on the news the more we believe that is our normal state no yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I can't disagree no, it's sad it is sad but it is the way that it is um all right, so we'll get to another topic here. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. No offense, I know a guy. I know a guy who uh, got a vasectomy at 20 and froze his sperm. Huh. Like, because he literally did not want to deal with any of it. <laughs> right. Interesting. Yeah, but he froze his sperm, so he. I mean, at some point, he could 
Was, yeah, because reversing a vasectomy is like a pain in the butt. Also, yeah. you know, he's 40 now. He doesn't want 40-year-old sperm. He wants 20-year-old sperm. It's better. That makes sense, sure. <laughs> huh, I never thought about that. Oh, guys! I just like I that. just read if you ever just read a book where it talks about the age of the father being just as crucial as the age of the mother for the health of the child, and things like um, bi no, uh, not bipolar, um, the one where you hallucinate. It's a mental condition. Schizophrenia. Yes, yeah, schizophrenia. Uh, if the father has children. The father, if the father is over the age of 30 when he has children, the rate of schizophrenia in his child, the possibility jumps like 12%. Over 35, it's like 30% higher. Over 40, it goes to like 70% higher. And uh, that's just one of the risks. So, I mean, well. people need to think of it. Like everyone's having kids really late these days and no one's thinking of the consequences. And I would mm. just... Little shout out to you, everybody who's listening. If you don't want kids before the age of thirty, really consider freezing your sperm or your eggs if you're a woman. That's a good point. That is a good point. But there's also a lot of teen <laughs> pregnancies going on there too. Yeah, and they never have unhealthy babies. Maybe it's not the optimal timing for them, but they have healthy babies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad I got mine out of the way when I was young. <laughs> yeah, you got more then, energy, too. Yeah. Yeah, I often think about that. I had my my children fairly young, and I'm glad. I'm too young yeah, for kids. Yeah, my parents. I'll wait. Um, and also, you know, guys have this, like, misconception. They're like, oh, if I have kids, my life is over, and women have that, too. But actually, statistically, men, men who have kids, Children, especially young children, earn twice as much as men who don't. Uh, they also like hold higher positions, jobs, etc. So, they're, having a family is an incredible motivational factor in a man's life as a provider. And uh, every man that I know started achieving his greatness when his first child was born, including my father. Yeah. Yeah. Probably one hundred percent right. You also actually, gotta find the right companion to raise that child with. Yeah, that's the tricky part. And then sometimes that companion that's changes over the years, part. and they're not the right companion anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, we we're coming but, up on know. a break. Uh, Julie, we're coming up on a break. You mind sticking around for uh, a little bit after yeah, the break? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. To episode 123 of Authentic Enlightenment, I am Chris Perkins, and I am joined by my co-host Mark Cummins and Michael Wagner, and of course, I guess Julia Toriansky. Is that how you say your last name, Julia? That's how Americans say it. So that, good. that's what I. That, yeah, well, that's what I was just like. <laughs> that's why I was asking, like. Should it's okay. It I'm not going to no one can say it unless they're European anyway, so it's fine. Okay. Okay. So yeah, are you doubting changed, changed, Are you doubting yeah, I'm totally that totally doubting. I, well, you can't roll your R first of all, and you can't say ya uh, <laughs> unless it's independent I don't know. from yeah. the right. word. Well, I am from New England, so I can drop my R's. <laughs> Do you want to try? <laughs> try what? You, like you want to like you want to try saying my real name? How do you say it? Uh, yeah, my real, my full real name is uh, Yulia Viktorovna Turianska. Uh, Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> yeah, ahead, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> that's that's why we Americanized my name, so people, you know, don't have to struggle. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, um. You have some, you have a couple of good videos that I really liked uh, on feminism, and uh, I do Thank like you. Your, yes, I love your stance on feminism, and I love those videos. Um, do you have any words that maybe you might want to shout out to some feminists, maybe out there? Mm-hmm. Yes, I think. Um, you did. it's such a <laughs> it's such a loose term. I mean, 
you uh, know. Yeah. Th- so many women I know claim to be like these strong, independent women, but mm-hmm. they're really not. And um, most feminists are like most radical feminists are like that. There's some. There's actually a few channels. Um, I think one of the channels is called like rational feminism or something. Anyways, the woman, she's older, she calls herself a feminist, but she actually has very similar views to me and, she, you know, she debunks the rape statistics and all this, but she still finds value in the rea- in the movement and what it's stood for historically, and I totally don't discredit that. And I'm actually uh, working on a video on the men's rights movement, which... I think is falling prey to being radical to becoming radicalized as well and sinking to the level of what feminism has become, which I find very interesting because it hasn't taken very long for that to happen. And you're doing mm-hmm. you're doing a video on that. Yeah, I have my I have most of my thoughts in order. I just have to find the time to do it at this point. I just I I think I think their movement has reached has already in such very short years reached extreme opinions uh which also find value in fabricating statistics just like the radical feminists do and it's very disappointing because it started out you know 50% of their platform is totally legitimate and then now they're just kind of shooting themselves in the foot by making ridiculous claims and being just as radicalized as the feminists have become. It's very unfortunate. It's actually incredibly disappointing to me. Sure, sure. Yeah, the third wave feminism. What's that, Michael? Oh, they call it the third wave feminism. Or feminism. So like in uh, other countries like Cambodia... There's uh, women sticking up for other women over there, you know, trying to help them get out of the sex slavery and things like that. Yeah, yeah, so that's real feminism. It's more that's real. That's real country. change, you know. There's, yeah. There's a there's a band of women in India who because in India it's very acceptable to beat your wife still. So right. there's a band in, of, of vigilante females in India who take in women, like they have a shelter and stuff, and then they go and they beat their the husband up and show him what it's like. See, that's I think that's great. <laughs> I think that's actually, you know, you, they don't get the government involved, they don't do anything, but they see value in retribution. And I think generationally it works because if people, you know, I, I, like anarchism isn't about doing whatever you want, whether or not it hurts people. If you're doing whatever you want and it hurts somebody and there's no retribution, society is going to go down down the drain. That has to be retribution for poor, violent action. Right. So, well, kind of getting back to that, how do you how do you um, do you view on anarchy in an anarchy society? How would you do that? Would you just would it be like private courts? private police? Um, I mean, yeah, sure, uh, but I think, I mean, it's very hard to envision things, and if you start to kind of build systems in your mind before we're at a moral place mm. to, actually, mm. to actually make them work, it's, you know, you kind of become a dictator. So, I mean, but I do know that small community retribution and policing does work. I dated yeah. a guy that was a, like, traveling musician hobo like you know that he lived he like lived in communities that were very outside of society with like traveling kids and their dogs you know and they don't call the cops obviously like they're all criminals by definition so one of their one of their friends who was female came to them one day crying because her boyfriend just raped her so they went and found him and scalped him he didn't hmm. die or anything, but like they, a group of her guy friends went and t- like through action showed him retribution. And guess what? He never <laughs> bothered her again. So I mean, exactly. whether you agree with that or you disagree, my point is people don't need the police to punish others. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. No, you so, and, and you're right about not you know not being there, not being in that, um, nor even close to having something to uh, of that society yet. 
to you know j- to jump to exactly what it would be. I, I like that way you were going with that at the beginning, but yeah, it's we're totally morally bankrupt, especially in California. <laughs> so we have a long way to go. <laughs> it's a place to visit, but not a place to live. I mean, yeah. I like shooting I'm guns. Shopping. In California, it's hard to shoot guns anywhere because it's just banned. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, it is. Not in Compton, you shoot guns, man. Julia? You can do what you want in Compton. <laughs> <laughs> I was just yeah. been, I was just listening to a good kid, Matt City, and it's just like a yeah. mess, man. And they all have guns because they have to have guns. <laughs> Please don't come. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh did you like the uh speaking of that the uh the new Kendrick Lamar album? What did you think of that? Did you, have you heard it? I I was obsessed with that album for like two uh, months straight. It's all I listened it, to. It is. Oh my it's, god, uh, it's so good. More people need to hear it. Uh, not just they need to hear the, the uh, like people looking for like the beats and all this. Like hear his words. And uh, it's, yeah. I have I have so much Google's support for, for Kendrick Lamar and 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 I I love what he's doing and nobody else is doing that right now and nobody has done that since like what like Tupac I mean yeah and it's so amazing I, yes I love it I love it I love what he's doing I oh, oh my god I would lo- I would just love to like sit down for at least like twenty minutes with Kendrick Lamar it would just like be a dream uh-huh. you know what I mean I, I would um, yeah, <laughs> yeah who I'm sure you I would mean. too. <laughs> I'm, I just like I'm like wa- I watched his performance on uh, Ellen and she's like praising his record and stuff yeah, and I'm yeah, like yeah I'm like what I, like you don't even understand what he's talking she about like no you're, idea. you're a yeah. California <laughs> progressive liberal yeah. girl like you don't you don't understand like you, you're probably a social justice warrior like you don't get it so I mean yeah he's wonderful like his whole uh, his whole rant on the N word. Yeah, and yeah. you know, dissing Oprah about it. I mean, that was gold. I just loved that. <laughs> it, it, it's true, and it's 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 kind of flying under the radar. And I've, I've I've been trying to like show people this because, uh, like I said, they're like not looking at the lyrics and stuff. They're not, and that's what yeah. I like about. If you're the whole an anarchist, hit. listen to that album. Oh my yeah. god, I've been telling everyone to. You have to. You have to. You, you have to. And, uh, yeah, it bugs me that people are like, well, Kendrick Lamar, oh, well, that's mainstream. It's like, you should be happy that someone is doing that in, in and getting mainstream play. Like, that's what we want, right? Isn't that what we want? I mean, we're against the oh, mainstream Oh, yeah, and media, I mean, the mainstream we, always, like, the mainstream never gets it. Like, I mean, he's only mainstream right. because he's so talented and well-produced and unique. Uh, that's why, yeah. It doesn't why, mean yeah. that the mainstream gets his lyrics. Exactly. So, but, Thank so you. you have both, which is great. You have both, and like you look at, uh, I mean, his big, his big song that made him famous, uh, the the song, the drink one, right? And it's so it's hilarious so because yeah, you, you yeah, go to yeah. clubs and people are drinking to the song, and this is a song about his alcoholic that's not what abuse. Yeah, that's not what he's saying. He's not. Yeah, <laughs> he's not saying go and wait, like screw your life up and get drunk and and all this. He's like. Limit that, you know, like pay attention, you know, like that's yeah, not what it's so all about. Ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. ironic. So I love that you understand that. That's awesome. That's so great. Oh, I love. It. I'm a huge <laughs> hip hop head, and like Kendrick. Good. Man, Kendrick, I just I I listen to him every day. I can't help it. He's so good. good. I do too. That's awesome. I love this. I love that. The first person that's like been on this show that actually has said something like that. So I appreciate that a lot right now. That means a lot. Yeah, means you're, a lot you're right. A lot of people show. dismiss. They dismiss anything mainstream. It's a bit silly, uh, especially yeah. when it's not even mainstream. That's what bugs me. It's like so someone like reaches that level and they finally get their stuff out in the mainstream. And it's like, oh, well, they're mainstream. Like, no, you, you get, there's a line. You, there's, there's a fine line. Use your head, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't know. It's uh I mean I do know. I feel and, your uh, I feel your rage. I feel it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, I totally get I mean, it. It's rage but it's positive rage. So <laughs> Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so uh we, we got uh gun control, gun rights. Uh I know you're pro gun. Um what do you have to say to the listeners why we should have guns and why 
gun control doesn't actually work. Well, I feel like the gun debate is so over, and like people who still think that there's a debate are just delusions. I agree with that. Yep, yep. It's just crazy, and like to the feminist girl, uh, I don't care how much um, you know Judith Butler you read, or I, I don't care. I don't care how much uh, dogma you swallow, and how equal you re- want us to be. You're still going to be physically weaker than than most guys. That's a reality. Call it a hate fact, whatever. That's a reality. So get yourself a gun so you can shoot the guy who tries to rape you, right? Like that's yeah. the only How way. Does, that is the only way. Right. How you does know? that not make sense? <laughs> right. It's, it's ridiculous that these women think they can be empowered through other means. Like a poster on your campus school ground is not going to like prevent rape. Like, guys, like, it's, like, this ridiculous note. Like, people don't, people aren't going to start murdering because it's legal. People aren't going to stop murdering because it's illegal. Rape is, you know, can be categorized somewhat with that uh, logic. You know, a rapist isn't going to stop raping if he sees a flyer, you know. It's ridiculous. He's going to rape you if he wants to rape you. And the only way you're going to stop him from raping you is if you physically stop him. And you can't because yep. you're a 120-pound girl and he's a 160-pound sure. dude. So yeah, sure. not every, Yeah, not everybody is uh, Ronda Rousey, right? I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> not everyone has time to learn, like, ridiculous yeah, it, self-defense. Sure. Um, yeah. Not everyone has, you know, time for, uh, for a uh, German shepherd in their home. Like, yeah. get a gun. It's cheap and it's easy to use and just learn gun safety. I don't encourage anyone to purchase a firearm without taking a class in self-defense or taking a sure. class in how to use the gun. Totally. Yeah, there's nothing wrong and with I that. mean, right, totally. And, like, I, fine, like, the world we live in right now, like, make it mandatory to take, like, a t- just like a driving test. You have to take a driving test to get a license. Fine. Okay, if we're going to... If we're going to make excuses to have a state, like, that's not that bad. Like, so, it, I don't know. I, the whole debate is just ludicrous to me at this point. Like, well, these people have nothing left to say, honestly. So, okay, so, uh, what I, like, so we got a lot of mass shooting a lot recently. Uh, do you think there's any, I mean, we all have our opinions on this. But uh, what do you think? You think there's a, a connection between like antidepressants, SSRIs? You think that's an issue with uh, these shootings? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, st- I was reading the same book I I was talking about earlier uh, with the schizophrenia statistic, okay. and he was yep. saying there's a chapter in it called "Spare the Rod, Medicate the Child." And it says, you know, we're we're now in this society where, like, if you hit your kid, you're the worst person, worst criminal, you should go to jail. But if you give your five-year-old psychotropics, no big deal. You're a great parent. And then those, those and then those drugs lead to your kid being completely chemically unbalanced and shooting up his own school. Like, why? Like, if there is an increase in shootings, which the statistics aren't, you know, totally united about. Uh, actually, crime is crime overall is down. I think sh- shootings in public places are up, but gun violence generally is down. But the reason they're up, I would argue, is because these kids are, and not just kids, you know, or young adults are heavily medicated, and they get, they go crazy. They literally go mental. And they're going to get a gun whether there's a gun for sale or whether there's a, like, a gun for sale in a store where there's a gun for sale out of someone's trunk. They're going to get a gun. It doesn't matter. So uh, why don't we stop medicating our population? Why, why don't we try that out? And the reason I brought the chapter in the book up is um, he talks about how there's actually statistics in very like puritarian Christian uh, regions of uh, England where they actually use corporal punishment quite a bit and there's this like weird consensus of if you hit your kids they'll grow up to be violent criminals but the statistics don't actually show that 
uh, they sh they show that kids grow up to be normal, functioning people in society. And I don't condone hitting your children. I don't think you should use corporal punishment. But no way. that I'm still I'm still not I'm still not gonna I'm not gonna stay on an empty uh, like with empty claims that hitting your kids equals violence. What does equal violence is medicating your kids. That can yes. be statistically oh, yeah. shown. Because oh, yeah. the, the medication of our that. children from the from the seventies to the nineties went up five hundred percent. Five hundred percent. Think yep, about that. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Think that's that. Really, in your really. Head. A lot of money yeah. involved. <clears throat> yeah, we're oh. we're hitting our oh, kids yeah. less. We're gen peop uh, parents are generally not using corporal punishment anymore, but we're medicating our kids more. That's the fact. So take what what you want from that. Well, that's well, that, a scary that, statistic. It, it, it's a very scary uh, statistic. And once this um, generation grows up, who knows what they'll be like? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Gosh, it's just terrible. I'm I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I I absolutely don't blame you. Um, we do have a we have a caller. Um, but before we get to the caller, uh, I got a uh, I do have a question that I I like to. I, it's my new thing. I'm gonna ask people this. I mean, not, it's not new, but uh, I like to uh, ask people. Um, I asked Rand Paul this question uh, last week, and I got ignored. Uh, we played the uh, footage on the last show. Um, what are your thoughts on Israel and the U.S. Uh, funding Israel? Well, and 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 the Canada funding Israel and and, and Canada they, funding Israel, yeah, uh, or anybody yeah, funding Israel. Yeah. Everybody's funding Israel. Exactly. So, what are your thoughts on that? I really want to hear what you have to say about that because I haven't seen a video hey. on that. And I haven't seen your opinion on that. So, I would love to hear that. It's it's all it's all a pol political game. You you fund the powers, you yep. and the powers fund you, and they have your back in the future. Like, of course, like of course they're gonna fund Israel. I mean, that's just I I don't support you, it. I don't. You're I don't, on par I don't with support Israel. countries funding other countries at all. Like, okay, period. Right. right. Especially like, if they period. Take care of their uh, own especially country. countries that are committing war crimes. Yes, like us. Right. Or not us. I, I shouldn't say us, like the U.S. I can't say us because I'm not yeah. involved in that anymore because I'm not, like, paying those taxes anymore that fund the wars. I'm involved. Yeah. I'm guilty. Yeah, you are because you're paying your income tax, and I'm not. And I'm not paying any anything like that. I'm not an anarchist, but I'm close to it. Do you, worry, do you worry? Do you worry about Julia, them coming after you? Julia's like talking me into this, like anarchist. <laughs> do uh -huh. I worry? Do, do, do you I worry? Wor do you worry about them coming after you? Because I know people who have who coming been, after me. You know, targeted them, like threatening you with jail time for not paying income tax. Uh, am I worried? Uh, not necessarily. Wor uh, I'm not scared. Um, I'm not worried. But if it happens, it happens. Uh, I'll take whatever comes with it. But uh, no, no, I'm not. Uh, I, w I could say worried. I would say worried is different than scared. Just because worried would mean sure. like if I like go to prison, I'm kind of worried about my son. So, <laughs> you know, like am I scared? No, I'm not scared to uh, – I'm not. I would never be scared to take one for the team. I would never be – no, but worried, yeah, worried just because of my my personal life, and that would affect my personal life. So that's my yeah. my answer to that. And what about you? Are you worried? I just need to figure out a way. Figure out a way to um, work outside of the system Under without the table. filing a tax return because they watch the you. If you don't file a tax yeah. return, be a stripper. Well. <laughs> Oh, I never yeah. had anyone recommend me that. There you go. <laughs> there are ways around it. That, that You can do it. I mean... Tough, though. You gotta yeah, tough. they don't want you to. And, uh, they don't. 
and I've had you know. no issues. I mean, I ran my own business for a couple of years, uh, and I never did the whole tax thing, so they haven't caught up with me yet. And it's uh, been it's been a while, but uh, there could be a day where they're like, "Oh wow, look at this guy. He's uh, causing some trouble. Let's look into his records. Let's look into. Oh wow, whoa, yeah. whoa." You know, oh, yeah. and like it'll come back on you at some point. So it might come back on me at some point, but mm-hmm. I'm willing to uh, to do what I have Did to do. You guys know that uh, I went to Israel just a month ago or so, two you months did? ago. Really? Tell us. Yeah, about this. sure did. Please tell uh, us about it. It was yeah. I mean, I went uh, you know for the Bitcoin community, which is awesome there. And it was actually funny. I go to the embassy and. Uh, I just stop by and I take a picture and put it on my Facebook. I guess where I am, and then I come back like an hour later, and the CEO of the embassy, the guy that runs it, is sitting on his computer, like replying to a message on my picture that I just took, like saying, like, oh, I just missed her. I can't believe she was just here and I missed her. And I'm like, hey, he's like, oh, you you came back. And then like everyone came and like I made all my all these new friends and everyone's super friendly and like they took me. I met I met this one guy like real radical kind of uh anarchist activist in Bitcoin like anti state. Um he his name was Rob Ratner and we we went to you know, we traveled around together. That was really fun. But you know, and he was very you know, anti the war and you know, anti oppressing Palestine and all of this and but he's a very small minority and that's how, you know, I was I was very interested in his opinions on what's going on and says, yeah, most people either just don't care, don't talk about it, and most other people are very pro-Israel here, of course. And he's in a small minority, and he gets into fights with people about it all the time. So, yeah, should we go to the caller? Yeah, what happened to that caller, Chris? Hello. Oh, what up, Jeff? What's going on, Michael? Uh, hey, Hi, Jeff, people. what's going on? Not much. How's it going? Hello, guest. Hello. Awesome stuff here. Liking it. Did you hear the... So... I thought you yeah. probably heard the last part of about the Bitcoin thing she did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know you happen to be a huge advocate for Bitcoin, and that's pretty cool. I mean, um, I wanted to get your take on uh, a conspiracy theory that I've... I mean, I've come up with it, whatever, but a lot of people apparently have also come up with it. And I'm sure you're not going to believe sure. it. You're probably not going to believe it, but a lot of uh, traders don't believe it. But, I don't know, I think it's a possibility. My theory is that this Satoshi dude is actually like some sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, cover for the CIA or some sort of alphabet agency. Maybe the central banking families. And that they want to use Bitcoin to become like next the global world currency. And a lot yeah, of people, I, did, I talked what about this saying? on Alex Jones. I talked about this for in for uh, Prism Planet with Paul Joseph Watson. I have a whole video with Paul Joseph Watson talking about that conspiracy theory. And check it out because I lay I lay it out. I kind of dismiss it, you know. I I just think it's a bit silly. And even if okay, first of all. It's a really crappy world currency, first of all. Um, second of all, the way that it has the potential of empowering the individual is very counterproductive to what like the new world order would want. Um, and the reactions from governments and other agencies have been quite fearful and n- not, you know, engaged in Bitcoin. Um, also, all right, let's say that it was created by the government. So what? So was the Internet, and it's been the most disruptive tool for the government so far. So no, what? Like, true. it depends on how you like, use the technology. And Bitcoin is its not set in stone. There is fluidity to the way that it works. And I know everybody in this community, and I know people who develop it. I know a lot of the core devs personally. And... You know, they put in hours and hours and hours of not only work, but community work, making sure that there is some sort of positive consensus of Bitcoin moving in the direction that 
would benefit everybody overall. And if they don't do it in a kind of democratic, communistic way, they do it uh, between the people who actually know how the tech works. So this is a really interesting example of like very uh, altruistic cooperation amongst individuals who could be power tripping. But what we're seeing is people loving this technology and progress so much that they are taking their time and putting all their brain power and effort to preserving the ethos. And there's bad actors like Gavin and um, Mike Hearn, and they are and they have been bad actors from the very start. And guess what? They're becoming discredited, and nobody likes them, and nobody respects them anymore. So I am actually surprised that happened, but I am very, very, very thankful that like the good is persevering. <laughs> no, I hear you there. Now, I, I guess it's just like a fun theory I play around with. It's like the whole idea that, what was it? The first transaction with Bitcoin, some guy gave another guy a, a pizza, a, a whole pizza <laughs> yeah. pie for 10,000 <laughs> Bitcoins. Yeah, and we know who, yeah, yeah we yeah. know the like usernames <laughs> and everything. Mm-hmm. But my, I think, yeah. I think, see, I'm, I'm like the idea that uh, these people, I could see it happening because I could see them going through their think tanks and coming up with the idea, well, let's make this, seem like it's completely grassroots. And then you had the media going uh, really See, I don't think they're that smart. I think you're giving them way too much uh, credibility. I think... <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I think these people are in positions of power because they've inherited it most of the time. And they're not that smart. They really aren't. If they were that smart, they would have already orchestrated their, you know, evil plans ages ago. It wouldn't take that long for them. And the smarter ones of them in the smaller countries do it faster. And I think it was an individual. Um, and I think that people, like when it was worthless, when this currency was worthless, it was just like geeks, nerds, and crypto right. anarchists. Like, oh, cool, something new that works. And I, I know people who were there from day one. I know several people who Not were same. there from day one when Bitcoin was worthless. And they just had fun, like, sending it to their friends because it's a new tech. Mm. People are curious. Yep. We're little monkeys. We like yep. to play around yeah, with things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see it, though. Because I mean, they do, I mean, a lot of people like to say that, you know, the government's not that smart. And I agree, most of the people in the government are smart. But they do have their think tanks. And if it is true, they have been preparing it for a long time. I mean, the whole, and a lot of people were speculating that they want, like, a new sort of global currency type deal. But, I mean, either way, even if, and then you had the media all promoting it. And the media is just like a joke, but they kind of also control the media. So why would they... Be throwing that I don't think the there. media was the media wasn't promoting it at all. If you look at yeah, yeah, look at any not. early interviews about Bitcoin, people are like, "You're stupid. This is yeah, real. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Right. Like right. the media coverage I, only yep. recently became positive. And you look at the history of online currencies and currencies backed by gold and things like that, like recent ones. Like look at um the Liberty Dollar. Okay, there's a great story that the creator of the Liberty Dollar, who's been, you know, on probation for like ages, I met him at a pork fest this year. He said that, uh, so the Liberty Dollar, Dollar was like around for like, what, 15 years or something. And it's a very similar concept to Bitcoin, except it's not electronic. And these are just like grassroots people who live in New Hampshire. And like, it was basically like the old school free staters, right? That that made this Liberty Dollar functional. And then it was all confiscated and the government stepped in, blah, blah, blah. Sure. But there's a great story. And I don't know if it's true, but I don't care. I love the story. So he says his buddy was at a um, hacker privacy conference in Prague or something. And he was, and everyone has like a name tag that has their online persona on. It's not their real name. And he started talking to a dude, and this dude was like, you know, in his mid twenties or something, and he was rambling on about the Liberty Dollar and how cool it is, and how he's gonna make, um, or how he sees that in a few years there's gonna be a. Uh, online version of the Liberty Dollar, and his name tag was Satoshi Nakamoto. 
Hmm. No, I've uh, I spend uh, most of my time actually during the last year, and uh, you you I'm sure you've heard of the, the whale club thing and uh, team speak with the uh, flibber and all those people. And there's a lot of good people, and they have a lot of interesting people. The most interesting person I spoke to was, was that dude who went to jail, not for the um, not the Ross guy. Not but, not uh, not Albrecht, but the yeah, other guy who, that you were telling who, us about. Yeah. yeah, who was the other guy? I can't even remember his name, but he was I, a really I interesting know. character. And most of them would probably agree with you. But, I mean, I'm just playing here, like, um, playing with the idea. If it's the case, then they clearly have been, in, if they have been involved in Bitcoin from the start, then obviously they've accumulated most of the coins because they want to manipulate it in the future. But also, on the plus, that is probably the only way that this will anytime soon. I mean, if it, if it is the government that's behind it, then Bitcoin's going to eventually take off and it's going to become Well, we know we know how huge. we we have a ballpark on how much coin the government has. Like the we you know, you know the addresses are visible in public, especially the old ones. There's a bunch of untouched uh cold storage addresses, we assume. There's you know, we know we know the CIA has like thousands of Bitcoin that they've stored up. Like, there isn't, like, uh, I mean, I'm sure if they split it up between loads of accounts, but I haven't seen from anybody who's taken the time to track these accounts, which many people have done, uh, raise any kind of suspicion about, like, one one epic holder of Bitcoin. And I'm sure Satoshi has the most, and he split it up between accounts, but... Uh, yeah, at this like, point, like you don't need to be yeah. the government to manipulate Bitcoin. Like you just need to be a, a bear whale or whatever, and just throw it in there, which is right. fine. I mean, a lot of currencies, most all currencies, can be. In, look at gold. Gold is so manipulated right now. Like <laughs> it's just yeah. a problem with <laughs> currency at this yeah. point. You know, I, Bitcoin is, is not the worst. This is going to make a lot of people angry, but I think even if there's a if this dollar bubble pops, uh, I don't think it's going to go to record lows. It could. It may. But um, if it does, I think gold will just go to seventeen hundred, and then uh, it will be suppressed down and manipulated down to about five hundred. Sil- silver, though, I think is the best bet because I don't think it's ever going to go any lower. But um, but even if the government were to take Bitcoin seriously or cryptocurrencies, I think they would end up making their own crypto coin and not using Bitcoin. Well, like uh, I mean, sure. I don't think the government has much use for it, to be honest. The banks, the banks could uh, benefit from it because it's cheaper to send. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but the like they're, sure. they're like a prehistoric, like the way that they do things. And there's companies that are working on, uh, you know, pitching, new, pitching similar. It's not Bitcoin necessarily, but the way Bitcoin works or could possibly work. They they pitch it. You know, it has been pitched to banks. That's a possibility. The government, the government wants everyone using credit cards. That's it. Like. Because mm-hmm. they can they can shut it down, you know they can control it. It's very visible. Like that's what they want. They don't want a cryptocurrency. That's it's ridiculous. Like they could can, they they should use uh, blockchain technology at least in the background of transactions. So what do you think about this um this collapse that is supposedly coming? I mean uh, I think it's going to start. Oh, like sometime. the Jewish every seven years thing. Yeah, I mean, you know the only problem uh, I have with yeah. that is. So- so much the Shemitah thing and Jubilee. The only thing I have problem I have with that is so many people now know about it because of the uh, the what is his name David Kahn. Yeah, or what? Well, um. no, it was Kahn. He wrote the uh, the Harbinger Code, I believe it's called. Berwick just uh, you know bit off of the uh, Harbinger. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. But he, he did a good yeah. video with that. He no, he did mention <laughs> Kahn's book. But I mean, but the problem with that yeah. is so many people now know about it that. <laughs> Once so many people know about it, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> they, they usually don't follow through. So I mean, because so many people are expecting it to happen in September, I have my doubts that it will happen in September. The S and P looks like it's going to drop in either no- November, December, or January. That's when that big crash looks like it's going to happen. Like this is just the beginning, and then it'll have a retrace, and then it will. But don't you think that people who like matter within the systems like all, all always knew about this anyways like who cares oh, yeah. who, if some plebs know about it because they watched a YouTube video like, True. I don't think that affects anything but 
Yeah, but the, the counter to that is if everybody knows about it, then we can say that it was intentionally collapsed and, like, it, it is one massive conspiracy to, like, deprive the nations of all their wealth. Yeah, so, but if it happens, who cares, like, what the cause is? Like, we're talking about is it going to happen or not? Those people, I mean, the, these people, no it's it's not the 1% that people like to claim. That would be, like, mil- tens of millions of people on the planet. It's really just a few thousand people. I mean, and and they all, we know who they are. They, they're, the lists of all the names are at this uh, Council on Foreign Relations and all, all these other groups that they that they uh, joined. They all have uh, names and home addresses. I mean, they're, they're mm-hmm. out there in the public for us to see. So, I mean, they're not completely, I mean, secure in that way. They, they have to be somewhat vulnerable. I mean, in a sense... <laughs> If we expose them, we can, in a sense, use their identities to keep them, keep them hostage almost, and make it so they don't use the militaries against the the population. What you know, some are speculating they might do. Uh, you know, I I just I don't see I don't get it. I I mean the Shemitah thing happens every seven years, so like why would there be military intervention this time? Oh well, well it's the last just, it's just the cycle. Yeah, the last few. I mean, um, where. Uh, significant as far as uh, the stock market and dollar value goes but um this one is the supposedly the jubilee you have which is once every seven times and the claim is that um in the old oh, Testament, so it's supposed to be bigger yeah it, once every seven shemitas is the jubilee year and what happened oh, okay. is in the you know with old jerusalem and all god came down and said uh basically you guys have to change your ways and you have some time to do it and if you don't, if you do change your ways, the Shemit, the uh, the Jubilee will be like a blessing. And if you don't, it will be like a, I want to say a curse, like you know, judgment. They use okay. the Bible. So, um, fifty years ago, supposedly, I think uh, Khan said, and I didn't read his book. I saw his uh, History Channel documentary, but he said that that is when we um, something significant with abortion happened, and America chose to go th- with abortion. I'm not sure if that's exactly accurate. Well, I, have, I have to look into in that. In the 70s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and now, yeah, yeah almost to the day or something and of, of the Jubilee year. And now, 50 years later, si- since we didn't, you know, obey the commandments and all that crap, um, is going to be our downfall. And that, supposedly, that's when a, an empire will fall or rise or whatever. So, Ironic, Ironically, yeah. Israel is very loose about abortion. Yeah, oh, mm-hmm. Israel's crazy. Is there, you said you went uh, to Israel. How was that, anyway? The, how are the people? I'm imagining they're cool. Go like our caller. Um, I'm like, Russian. Totally. I'm Russian, and a lot of <laughs> a lot of Jews are Eastern European, right? So uh, we have similar. Um, we, I guess, our worldview is similar, like in the way that we act and our aggressive nature and straightforwardness. So I felt at home to some degree, really good food, but, and most people aren't very political, like, it's very secular, Israel's very secular, uh, more secular than you think, actually, and then there's, you know, you have your, uh, his, you have your Hasidic Jews and Orthodox Jews and stuff, and I sat to, I sat with an Orthodox Jewish guy, he was like 21 on the plane, and, um, I found that his world was very limited and closed off, but, you know, he lives in his community, and that's what happens. And at the same time, they have very strong moral views about things, and they're generally nonviolent, the Orthodox Jews anyways. So I, it's very hard to just be like, oh, Israel is like this, and the people are like that, because it's, it depends who you talk to, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, from the person I was hanging out with who's lived there, his you know, generationally, um, he gets very frustrated with the general consensus about what Israel is doing as a country state. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that uh, we should we should get everybody out of Israel and fly them to America and just get them here fast. And and that way we don't have to worry about protecting our ally and we can just give, you know, Islam the entire Middle East, let them have fun with it, and we can forget about it and save trillions a year in military and close down all the uh, the bases and and just bring all our troops home and have them protect our borders, etc. So I, I do have really good shawarma. I wouldn't mind. 
Works so you didn't, they're delicious. You didn't run into any <laughs> yeah. like crazy radical Zionists then. Um, no, I did not, but I'm sure they are uh, around. No. Well, look yeah. at you. No, of course they're around. I mean, that's we know that. Yeah. <coughs> Rambo. <Yep. laughs> Rambo. <Rampo. laughs> I don't know. I still think he might be. Yeah, I prove that, man. I prove that. <laughs> He I might prove be. that. Did I not prove that? No, it was good. Now was that was good? good? Julia, you want me to uh, play that clip for you? It's it's kind of like four minutes. Can That's what his clip? advisors did. Though. His, his advisors told you him wanna, that you want to sum it up for me. Uh, I yeah no. Uh, I'll actually send you the uh, YouTube clip. I don't want to play it on the show. We've already played it. it takes up four minutes, and uh, I know you probably have some. Uh, stuff to get to so I don't want to take up all your time but uh, I'll send you the uh, YouTube link and you can uh, watch it because it's uh, okay you know (laughs) so it's Rand Paul being a Zionist basically (laughs) just one one answer Mm -hmm. question I'll show you the clip I got a little nervous watching it (laughs) <laughs> I did. I, I, I wasn't all that way. Mar, Mar, everyone, yeah, it was like all eyes on me. It was like uh, everyone was looking at me. Why are you asking? Yeah, you should. It's like, well, nobody else is going to ask I'm, that. I'm, just, I'm so disappointed with Rand Paul. Like, oh, yeah. me too. Compared to like, his dad? Especially, like, even as, just from a political perspective, like, uh, from the political game, like, if, if you watch the debate and he's just, he attacks Trump, like, yeah. the last person oh, who yeah. should be attacking, man. Like, are you kidding me? Like, Trump... And he, like, attacked him in a stupid way, and he totally yeah. got shut down. Yep. I'm like, yeah. wow. Yeah, I don't mean, attack not, Trump not, if you don't know what you're talking right. about. I'm not a Trump fan, but you should be attacking other people over Trump. That's how right. I feel. Yeah, that reeks yeah. desperation. You know, Jeb Bush, you know. This kind of reminds me of a weasel. Like, like just a, like yeah. an actual, actual, people like... Are, like weasel, and like. people are saying like, "Oh, he's just doing that to," and, and and that's that is plausible. It is plausible that you would have to do that to get into the whole thing. You would have to. I mean, if you, it, it, I don't. As much as I don't want to, what shut down that, Trump? Well, right. Well, Got to go well, after those. That's why I hate politics. Like you don't have to that's do that. Hate politics. You know, I, no, I, I agree. Right? No, I. It's well, a, it's all it's but, all crap too, and they're all jumping on this Planned Parenthood, yeah, uh, business, right? And yeah. they're like such liars and hypocrites. Cause, uh, what's the guy's name? That's the um, uh, the governor of New Jersey. Christie. Chris Christie. Yeah. Chris Christie. Yeah, Christie. What the hell is Christie talking unlike, about? Unlike that people that smoke marijuana, <laughs> but he's like, he's fat. No, he's like... <laughs> well, well, I just want to point out how he talks about how he's, he, he's anti-abortion fully. And it's like, dude, your state allows abortion to the moment of birth. And that, and that, yep. What, yeah. like, what are you doing as, what are you doing as governor of New Jersey when you can't even overthrow that? Like, most states at least have it limited to like three months or two months well right. your state is one of the, i think new jersey and another one i forget which one i didn't america, know new that jersey for sure yeah I mean, new jersey it? allows it to the moment of birth you like they can you can legally kill your child at nine months and he's talking about being anti-abortion what a what a i i don't want to i don't know if i can swear in this Piss i lived in jersey all my life i didn't know this no yes yeah, yeah of un- course you un- 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 you can swear yeah, you're. you're yeah, okay. he's he's just a lying piece of shit. Because I'm sorry, if you're the if you're the governor of New Jersey and you're anti-abortion and it's still up to the moment of birth in your state, like fuck you, like you haven't done shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice, it's nice week, Carter. <laughs> took all night. She it took all night for her to drop the uh, f bomb. Ah, all night. Yes, well, I noticed yeah, that. Yeah, most, most. I usually am not allowed. <laughs> This is uh, yeah, it's on. Come on, I mean, we have like Lee Camp and and Kokesh and 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 we, we come on. We have like a, a lot of people that like to. Uh, Conrad I don't know Conrad how you feel about Christopher <laughs> Cantwell. We used to be fans up until recently. What's your thoughts on Christopher Cantwell? I know you know. Uh-huh. Who he is. Um, I hardly uh-huh. know anything he does. 
but what? everything he everything he's been famous for so far has been repulsive to me. Thank you. Uh, the Thank the first time I heard about him was when he was who was that guy? Okay, there was an older Bueller. male who ran an online website. It was like a, it was very um, Austrian economics and Randian free free state. Uh, Free society or something, and he admitted on Facebook that he molested his daughter, and then Cantwell like, oh, oh, and then yeah, the daughter yeah, wrote. Yeah. A, do you remember that the daughter wrote yeah, an article about it, and Chris was, Cantwell yeah. like victim blamed her. Oh wow, I didn't know the details on that. That's harsh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he like called her whiny. I don't know. He, it was it was ridiculous. Wow. It was like you're a piece of shit. Like what are you doing? Um, also, pulling out the gun and those drunk people were like, "You're so desperate for views, man!" Like, really? Yeah, I saw that. And then the whole like Josie Wales like yeah. naked picture yeah. thing, like, yeah, I, like, yeah. Oh, I'm about yeah, Josie so. level of releasing these pictures, except now that I'm going to because you said that I did. Like, right. what? What kind? Of, you're the most illogical person yeah. in the world. Like, don't even yeah. claim to be. Uh, don't claim to be an anarchist because we're we're logical. I'll side with him when he uh, was. A- that Antonio Bueller, though, the only only thing I'm going to do is Jeff, you're just, breaking up. Uh, you're breaking up. Jeff, you're breaking up. All right. Yeah, I'm sure the dude has like some good opinions and some no, stuff. No, he does. But I, he does. And that's when why. when no, no. when you think like that low, I just think you're a bad human being. Like right, yeah. And I had a lot of I agreed with him on a lot of stuff, but I think lately, like in the past year, like I've totally like moved. A way for he used to come on our show. He's been our sh- on our show like a few times, and like he just like for for like once he got that little uh, plug there on the uh, Colbert Colbert show, Stephen Colbert show, the whole thing with the really, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, they did a thing on them with the uh, what is it uh, Free State Project, Free State free Project. Keen. So they Free Keen pro yeah Free Keen, and uh, they had Cantwell on Colbert, and after that, dude. <laughs> That Lucky. was it. And it's like, and, and like, you know, and then like after that, I couldn't even get him on the show because I had some issues with him. And I was like, all right, so I want to get him on the show because I want to talk about this shit. He refused to come on the show. He was a wicked dick about it. And there was the whole thing with Josie. And I love Josie. I have no issues with Josie. She's been on our show. Josie's and I have cool. no fucking, the, the, the thing, what, what, if he had anything to do with it or whatever, I don't care. But whoever had anything to do with that, they're, they're fucking assholes. Oh hell yeah! And, well, yeah. Uh, her, know, her boy, her ex-boyfriend, oh, the cop lock. Yeah, he had right. a yeah. demo. I a, mean, a demo. thanks Fuck for apologizing, it. man. But Fuck, like, yeah. you're a dickhead. Yep. You, you don't do that. And uh, yeah, all those, all, all those, all those. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess we're in after and, hours. And, I, and we, yeah, the we, thing, we the thing too with that, like, I like the whole like red pill side of it. Like, oh, well, yeah. don't take naked pictures of yourself. And right. you know yeah. what? Josie was actually yeah. careful about it. She didn't put her yeah. face in it. But because she she's, like, a little bit famous and people know her in the community and there's, like, right, a tattoo, right. also, ha- it doesn't matter because it's her ex-boyfriend. And if he puts a picture up of, like, a half, like, a like a naked body and says it's That's Josie, people are going to believe him. So, like, yep. even if you take the precaution, you're still going to have your tits out in the world because yeah, your but- ex-boyfriend is, like, so shitty that he would, like, yeah. violate your privacy that way. That's- that's fine. He's a scumbag. And, and that's, why, that. that's why we totally, after that, we were like, and that's why I wanted to get Cantwell on the show, because I wanted to bring that up, because that's what we like to do here. We're, we're like, you know, I mean, not not like not like you. We're not going to sneak attack you, because we we agree, <laughs> you know, we like you. Or, <laughs> not to, well, you it know. shouldn't be, none of this should be but, a sneak attack. They did it, so I mean, well, like, no, 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 fair no, enough. But, but, yeah. but, but you're not going to get someone on the show to talk about that, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you have to mm-hmm. do that, and it's uh, that's what I was gonna do. I was like, well, all right. So I know Cantwell does. I mean, I know I've agreed with Cantwell on many things. So like, let's get him on the show. I think he knew because I, I think a lot of my my Facebook my Facebook posts and stuff like that. So I think that was the whole deciding moment when he was like, well, I probably shouldn't go on there because I know he's gonna ask me about that because I threw a fit about that Aww. and wow, you know, and bit of a coward you know, then. So I yeah. guess that maybe wasn't a sneak attack because I wasn't too sneaky about it. But I mean, I don't know. But I would like, you know, I like to call people out that uh, do things like that. And uh, Cantwell is one of the people that need to be called out. And there are a, a few other people that we have talked about on the show. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I wrote a whole article about this. See, these anarchists, self-proclaimed anarchists, non-aggression, non-violence, and then in their personal lives, they're pieces of shit. Like you can't. I mean, yes. and that's why we that's why we talk about cyber anarchists because that's it makes you wonder if anarchism could really work. You know, cause and that's the thing. Yeah, it does. It does make, it does make Nature, me wonder. Yeah, it does it. Make everyone me wonder. Everyone actually get along and do that. Like I look at humanity, and that's why I'm not like like I do. Well, that's I, why I'm I like, for retribution because we don't all get along. <laughs> right, right. I'm and sorry, that's why, that's Mark, why I like your. That's why I like your 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 views because you I actually. When shut I debate yeah, can't well, dude, I kicked his ass. No, man. you did. You actually yes, did. did not. You did. Yes, no, he really I, actually didn't. Yes, did. He really <laughs> actually demolished you <laughs> on that debate. Um, That's yeah. so funny. It is. But I would mostly agree with you over that, but that debate can't well absolutely destroyed you. And no. but uh What was that the was, debate? I think we have our, it. We have it. I can <laughs> it was. <laughs> we asked it about an hour. In our it was, anarchy it was, and uh it was that's how it started, wasn't it? Like I don't know, that was like two years ago. That was I don't. It was a while know. ago. Yeah, that was a while ago. I just I don't remember. I, I don't know. I, I just know Campbell did win that, but I get into that one. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Anyway, I'm not I'm not down with that. I'm not down with the what Campbell does and 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 other anarchists. That's why I I, I appreciate you uh, because. You don't do that. Well, what do you guys think of um, like the Stefan Molyneux thing shutting down the uh, YouTube account and stuff? Well, <laughs> are you guys fans or I not fans? Big, I oh. threw a big fit. No, I do not like Stefan Molyneux. I didn't yeah, love. I, not, I did fan. not. I don't like him. But some of his videos recently have been kind of no, no, uh, no, no. Our, just like just like Larkin Rose. I like some of his stuff, but me and Larkin have had I've had debates with Larkin, and he won't address certain things with me. He just ignores me. And uh, I try to get him on the show to talk about it, and he refuses to do it. And uh, that's 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 why I like that you came on because it, it's kind of weird that we can get women anarchists on the show, but these men won't come on. And uh, uh, except for Derek Bros, Derek Bros will come on because I love Derek. Is it like that ego thing? Yeah, Derek's a cool dude. Derek is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Derek, and uh, Derek will always come on. I mean, it'd be like if we had Mark Sa- uh, Mark Savage on, and uh, you know, I, I agree a lot with uh, uh, with him. And um, I think the anarchists that we really just couldn't stand were Cantwell, who else? Who else have we had on that were anarchists? So, is that the only one? <laughs> is that yeah, probably, dude. There? Like really? <laughs> like, I mean, Bur- Berwick wouldn't come on because I know that. He knew <laughs> that he was getting set uh, up. But <laughs> come on, well, we've had Adam on and can't well. No, of course, had Adam on, but Adam, I don't even know Adam. Adam, like another right. anarchist that's running for president. I don't even know. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, of course, had Adam on. I don't. Adam, really? Adam. <laughs> Ad- Adam is Adam. Adam has changed right. since last year, though, and and philosophically, I. I He's had a, ever since he's been out of prison and everything, right. but out of jail or whatever. Like it's like his philosophies. I love it. Uh, I don't know what he's doing with the little hips, hip, hipster thing now, but uh, I'm gonna give him shit the next time he comes on for that. What hipster thing? He's just like he's like. Have you seen his videos lately with his glasses and like he's like oh, oh. like. <laughs> well, his 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 fiance is a yoga, uh, yoga I know. teacher, so I know. maybe and that's, that's part why of I'm it. Like that. He's yeah, getting a bit hippie. <laughs> nice, <laughs> but that's okay. I don't mind that. Yeah, I she's really it. nice. She's, they're cool. They, no, I I do like her actually, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. I I have I'm not talking shit about Adam. That's great. If you want to do that, that's great. I I would rather you do that. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, what's the like, point? It's just Adam. <laughs> I mean, I've been like know him for so like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adam. But, Adam's Adam. Adam doesn't hurt a fly. He's like no, he does yeah. thing. And, uh, he gets like a, a lot of spirit. shit. He gets a lot of shit from people, and I and that's why I stick up for him because he doesn't deserve it, man. That dude has busted his ass. He's put his ass on the line, and people don't even uh, they don't. Uh, you need to appreciate people like that. That's how I feel. I appreciate Adam. Yeah, he has a lot of controversy with like the whole. I don't. I just don't know. I am not gonna judge him until I know facts. But, yeah. uh, like, from my experience with Adam, like, 
Dude's like really well intentioned and like has a good heart. Like I don't yeah. know what else I can say. No, no, dude, I agree with you. And uh, any conversations that I've had with him, that's what I get out of it. Yeah, I talk to you know close and, friends of his and everything, and they say the same thing. So I mean, yeah, he's he's awesome. You guys, if you haven't seen the roast we did this year at Porkfest, check that out. That was all Adam. It was he twisted my arm into participating. It was so scary, but like I ended up doing a good job. And thanks, Adam, for twisting my arm because now I have more confidence. Thanks. Awesome. Um, anyways. Check out that video. It's um, it's just type in 2015 pork fest roast. It's awesome. But I have to run, guys. Um, yeah, we're about ready to wrap yeah. up. You are speaking at Liberty Fest, right? Sure yeah. am. Okay. Yeah, I'm speaking go. at Parallel Polis the week before. Okay. It's a hacker conference, and then I will be speaking at Liberty Fest, and that's gonna be it for me for a little while. I think I'm gonna stick. To my home country. I'm really tired of traveling. <laughs> so check me out. It might be like your last chance in a while. So I can come Definitely. make an effort to go to New York or plug. And any other plugs? I mean, your YouTube webpage, get it oh, out yeah. right now. Brave the World. Uh, just type in Brave the World channel into YouTube. BraveTheWorld.com. I have really awesome t shirts. I have the best Bitcoin t shirts you will find, and that's how I fund my operation. I, I take donations as well. You can do PayPal or Bitcoin. And follow me on Twitter. That's like my favorite, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty active. And, you know, I don't regurgitate. I try to keep the platform separate, so I will not be repeating too much that I say on Twitter on Facebook or Good. on my website sure. or whatever. So it's really, it's, I'm I'm very fun on Twitter, so follow me at Brave the World. So take care, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you for coming on. Enjoy your night. Yeah, anytime, guys. Take care. It's not that. Hey, I uh, love reality not... TV. Don't, you... don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> no. Okay. Well, this, you'll probably like this because it's it's going to be entertaining. Uh, I won't. I'm not going to speak too much of it. Um, because I'm not supposed to say anything yet, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I I think uh, yeah, I, 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 when it's done, I'll make sure that you uh, you get it, you get to, <laughs> I'll give you the link to it so you can check it out. Sounds good. But, <laughs> so, all right, um, before we get like too in depth, um, we uh, of course I, I'm familiar with your work anyway, but I just happened like it was like last week. Um, I was going, you know, I was scrolling through my news feed and I saw like, oh, well, you're on the Alex Jones uh, show. Well, we're not here. We're not uh, Alex Jones fans. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. It's okay. I, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, I don't know. I have my opinion on Alex Jones. Uh, no, you know, let's I'm do not, this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. So. Yeah, okay, so I, I don't normally want. <laughs> uh, no, I do. I do want to know. I mean, you did a great job, by the way. Uh, out of, I mean, I haven't seen. I, I did used to listen to Alex Jones a, a while back, but it was. Uh, I've. Not, I don't. Of course, I don't see it all the time, but I've never seen him. Uh, get, he gave you his whole desk and everything. But this is. I was. I got a question for you. Um, yeah. He started. He started to get some callers you know, with some legit questions, and uh, if I felt like he couldn't honestly answer them without making himself look bad. So then the next thing you, you know... The, the, fem- to- the FEMA camp thing? <laughs> yeah, 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 all that stuff. I, it, it, yeah. Yeah. But I'll, you'll, you'll understand what I'm getting at right here. Um, so he goes to his commercial break or whatever, and then he c- comes back, and Alex is gone, and you're sitting there... So I'm just kind of curious, did he just not want to, like, have to answer all that stuff? Oh. And did he just, like, leave you there with all the callers, like, just to, like, fend for no, yourself? No, no, I don't know. I think I think you're having, like, a biased interpretation. Um, <laughs> the only question, the only bad caller we had was that dude that was challenging him on FEMA the, camps. And well, I okay, mean, well, I kind of had fast right? forwarded through a little bit of it. And then I saw, like, it went to a break because I wasn't, I mean, it was a whole three-hour show. I was just trying to get to your, yeah, so he, your uh, part. Yeah, yeah, after that, we just had, we didn't really have really that many questions. We had people coming, uh, calling in with input, and the okay. questions were pretty Questions were pretty basic. Um, Alex was really, like, the whole time 
he had somewhere to be. He had some personal things he had to work out. And uh, we were supposed to do dinner and stuff, like, with the crew, but it just, like, didn't happen because of that, and he felt pretty bad over it. But so it, it wasn't anything like, oh, I don't want to answer questions anymore. You okay. do it. It was he okay. actually did have something to do. <laughs> and it sucked because, you know, I was in town. But, you know, um, right. he, yeah, it's just personal things because he, he was going to do, like, dinner with, like, Cody Wilson and I as well okay. a few nights before, yep. but he was traveling. The guy's busy, man. But, so is he, uh, is he cool really, really, really busy? Yeah. Yeah, he's super busy. He's going through like st- uh, he's you know he's a human being. He it's not just work for him, right? And I I've I've been on the show before, but not in studio. And we always vibe pretty well. We just I, you know Alex is this like big bulldog, right? And he's like quite <laughs> abrasive and you know very he just like. Yep. <laughs> he, well, he's got a lot of uh, passion and a lot of sure. experience under his belt. And I'm, you know, I can be very aggressive too, but I'm good at, you know, as a female, I'm good at gauging people and balancing them out. So I take this like <laughs> very imagined crap. All there is is the human being in your selfish, and if you say you're not, then you're a liar and you have an agenda. And he puts it in, I mean, this guy wrote this in the 1700s, so the language is quite different, but it says the same thing that Ayn Rand says years and years and years later. Yep, absolutely. Sorry, I was, I, got, I got a bunch of people messaging me. I'm trying to uh, shut Facebook down so uh, this stuff's going off. All right, anyway, we're good. Yeah, but the, um, the thing with socialism, you you got to share, and people just don't want to share, so it never yeah, works. Same, same thing yeah. with Facebook. You got to share. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody yeah, wants it, to share, man. Who yeah. who was it? Who was it that said uh, communism communism will never work because people like stuff, like Frank Zappa or somebody <laughs> said that. You know, people like owning <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I people think, love their stuff. They got, yeah, and actually, they got the, the most, the most uh, materialistic people I know are people from California, like those freaking liberal, the liberal mm. progressives. They love their stuff. They preach like they preach all this equality <laughs> and socialism and spreading the wealth. Go to one of these people's houses. It's filled with crap. It's just filled with materialistic goods. And then, you know, when there's an economic economic downturn, they don't know what to do with themselves because. They've always frivolously spent their money. Yep. They don't know the how the yep. economy works. They don't know how to save. And they just think people, like, they grow up with a silver spoon in their mouth. So communism is a great concept to them because they've never been poor. And then yep. I find that, like, personally offensive because my family and I come from a country that had communism. We know what it's like to be poor. We know what it's like to be immigrants. Like, and then you have these horrible people from California who've grown up with everything, like, just handed to them, talking about spreading the wealth. Yeah, I'll take hmm. some of your wealth, honey. I'll take it. That's fine. My PayPal account is the same as my email, <laughs> yeah. so send it to me, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> That's funny. Um <laughs> Yeah, well, you're speaking of, <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, you're speaking of California, and uh, in November I'm actually moving from Maine to California. Uh, for Why the on earth? Maine well, is well, so no, beautiful. No, no I've and the lobster and the blueberries. <laughs> uh, you don't have to tell me that. I've lived here for thirty thirty four <laughs> years. I do know I'm going there for the winter. Um, I have some opportunities out there that I'm going to go do. I'm going to be there for four months. You know, it's, it'll be a nice little trip. I'm not going yeah. to live there forever. I'm just going out there. So I'll see, I'm going to see everything firsthand that you're talking about anyway. And, and of course, I have oh, friends yeah. out there. And have they fun. say the, they say the <laughs> same thing. They say the same thing that you say. Um, but, you know, I, I do. I have, you know, I got a lot of friends out there. I'm just going out there. It's a good setup for me. Uh, you know, I'm not going out yeah, there to unfor- look for work. Unfortunately, California is <laughs> where, like, a lot of things happen. So I don't yeah. blame you. I mean, I know yeah. a lot of my friends live there, too. Right. <sighs> It, it, you know, I don't want to live there forever. No, that's I'm just I'm gonna go there. Uh, you know, I have some projects that I'll be working on out there. 
uh, me and my friend uh, from Boston are we're we're driving. We're doing a road trip out there. We're going to be making some stops at certain cities on the way, and we're filming a documentary. And uh, we'll be meeting up with uh, certain activists, you know, and and, and uh, doing interviews for the documentary and stuff. So, I mean, it's it's a whole big thing. It's like it's like one big four month project. Uh, I have a a reality show that I'll be working on. With it's not your typical reality show. Uh, I can't talk too much about it, but it's not when you think reality show. He can and like sits in one of these like we we can help you get out of the country things and. He's heard of them before, and a lot of them are scams, or a lot of them start out legit and then scam you later. And but you know, he's like, "Well, we have the money. Let's just risk it and try." So you know, he gives this dude like a large chunk of money. Uh, they do all our papers, blah blah blah, and miraculously, it wasn't a scam, and we got out of the country. <laughs> uh, and then wow. if you. I think a few months after. So what happens is these companies, they put a couple people through so that they build up credibility, and then they the last like session of people, once there's more, they run away with the money. So that happened to that company eventually. Uh, it happened to loads of other companies that my, our, some of our friends got screwed with it. Our other friends also got out of the country, went to Germany and stuff. So it was kind of like a lottery, and we won. Wow. And that was 97, you said? Yeah. That's pretty good. Chances of winning the lottery. (laughs) Yeah, it was was the best choice my dad ever made for us. Good, good. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, Can you kind of walk us through what got you into, uh, you know, kind of what you're doing now then? Uh, The the process of elimination... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> process I mean, of elimination process of elimination yeah uh, everything else sucks like nothing else makes sense to me fair enough I just yeah you I mean I probably learned it from my own family they don't associate a label with, with their lifestyle but they've always done what they thought was right and what they Good. wanted to do without hurting uh-huh. others so I mean awesome. that's anarchism in my mind Mm-hmm. Well, good. I like I like anarchi- anarchism in your mind better than <laughs> a lot of my friends who are anarchists because we kind of call them cyber anarchists. But I I take that away from. I mean, I I separate them from actual anarchists. Um, I don't know. There's just you know people on Facebook they like to, they, they, they like to talk a lot, but they 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 talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And I like to see if I mean. You can be an anarchist. You you, you still got to walk the walk. I mean, if you're going to be an anarchist, or if you just you're someone who likes anarchist principles, which I would maybe relate myself with more, because it's so much closer to my ideals. I just yeah. don't like to put a label it starts, on it. That's all. And it starts at home, you know. It starts in the family, like. I I believe in discipline and guidance and all of this, and I I believe in you know sometimes pushing your kids to do something they might not want to because they just don't know if they like it or not yet. I like that's that's all a balance. But at the end of the day, if parents only love you if you meet their expectations, that's you know that's conditional, and that means that also implies a lot of control and power games within your family. My family, to, in my family overall, in my day-to-day lifestyle and choices, as long as I wasn't doing something overtly self-destructive, they let me do what I want. And I mean, just imagine like. Like I mean, I finished university. I did all that, which they wanted me to do, and I mean, it, it hasn't really benefited me in a direct way, I would say. But after that, you know, I just kind of bounced around. I did some small business stuff, and then I went really heavy into this. And like, what do you? Most parents would freak out. 
like, mm. oh, wait, where are you going? You're going to go live in squats for <laughs> months. You're going to go to, con- like, we're going to an anarchist, very feminine approach when I do shows okay. with him because it's a, we balance each other out well that way. And you could see that with one of the callers where he gets, he kind of, like, gets really annoyed with him and I just reel mm-hmm. it back in and, like, just ends the conversation because it was going nowhere. Fair enough. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yep. That's Maria, fine. Alex, enough, I mean, whatever your I did whatever have to your ask opinion that. of Alex is, like, <laughs> I just want to state, like, he's the real deal, man. Like, he is, you see what you get, like, and you get what you see. Like, dude's not, there's no show. That's just Alex. It's So that's very refreshing for me because sometimes you meet people and they're very, I don't know, you just, like, don't expect them to be the way they are. But Alex is, like, 100% right. the way he is. It's kind of fun. I guess I have a question. Um, Do, do you think Alex worries a lot? Is he the worrying type? When I, before I started doing any of this, um, my boyfriend at the time, who introduced me to Alex about, damn, uh, 10 years ago, he sent, he's this guy from England, and he sent me this, like, we have it, like, this long distance relationship, and he would send me these ripped DVDs of, you know, music and the concerts and stuff, and on one of them he put, Alex, the Alex Jones show, but 10 years ago, Alex Jones show, where it's just like Alex sitting in like this dark room with a curtain behind him, like like re- recorded on this old camera, and he's just like ranting about the occult and uh, secret societies. <laughs> so I've been, you know, and and then we were li- we we were listening to Alex for ages, and I would always ask my boyfriend, uh, I would say, oh, do you think like when he's like, with his wife? You know, he's just, like, talking about this nonstop, and she's just like, Alex, please relax. Baby, please. Like, <laughs> I, I think funny. dude, I think dude doesn't stop. Like, I think I, I think right. Alex has a hard time relaxing, and that's just, you know, he's on this earth with a purpose, a very straightforward purpose, and that's what he does. And I almost feel bad for him because he's one of those people whose minds just don't stop working. I can see that. Yeah, I can. I, I get can. that way too okay. sometimes, especially at night. Yeah. Your mind just doesn't stop racing. Uh, I know Penn yeah. Jillette has talked about it. It's like yeah. almost a personality uh, trope or something. Okay. Well, all right. So, all right. Um, you you lived in Russia. Uh, when, when did you uh, just to get some sort of little background? Uh, when did you leave Russia and? Uh, I haven't looked into your background too much. I didn't look into the, your background or anything. Um, I yeah, you, I left in ninety seven. Okay, and what were, like what were your mo- what were your motives for leaving? Um, my daddy had one of the first businesses after the collapse in the Soviet Union, and um, okay. he just saw it being co opted by the mo- local mafias, which is a very normal thing that happens there. As soon as you start making sure. money. You get a target on your back, and people basically steal your business away from you. And they have a very, they have very subversive ways of doing it. Um, and you literally can't, you, you know, in Russia you can't call the police. Like there's no law, there's no court system that's functional because of the bribery that goes on. Right, right. So, yeah, basically it it was funny. We were going to move to a new house, and we had the model of the house all built out and stuff. And then my father hears of the po- finally the possibility of opening up to move to either Canada, Australia, or America. And he went to one of these, you know, like when they send you like a, a timeshare invite, and like you get a free vacation, and like you go to the timeshare thing, and they like pay yep. all their stamps. Sure, yeah. So it was kind of like that, except it was just like a little conference. He, you know, he goes to Moscow or whatever for the week. So we'll get to our guest. I, ha- I have a little uh, clip. I'll play um, one of her clips before uh, we introduce her. So I will play that right now. Join me in my love affair with freedom. We declare sovereignty as free people. Don't police me. Statism is death. We see a threat on our life, liberty, and property. Instead of privacy, we have permission. It's about control, isn't it? Instead of life, we have granted existence. It's about the incremental eradication of freedom. Brave the world. Hijack the hijacker. Create your own reality. We are not victims of culture. 
We are culture. We are the Hydra. Cut the head off. I dare you. If something is certain, run the other way. Anarchy is accepting that we don't have all the answers. More so, anarchy is accepting that no one should have all the answers. But you cry, prove anarchy works, and we say, welcome to anarchy, population everyone. This is not utopia. This is not a vision. This is not a system. This is not a solution. We'll leave all that to the dictators. Allow me to escape the feedback loop. Allow me to escape the feedback loop. So, yes. <laughs> It's like a trailer into my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's I, I love that, and I I I love your views um, because a lot of the anarchists. Uh, and welcome Julia to the show, by the way. <laughs> sorry Thank the, you. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> it's okay. But uh, it happens. yeah, a lot of the uh, anarchist view because I mean we. We have a lot of, an- I mean, none of us are anarchists, but I have a lot of anarchist friends. And probably the closest, uh, I guess we'll say the label, I don't like labels, but, but I'm closer to more anarchist views than any anything else. Uh, I'm not on on par but with all of them, but I like how you, uh, I like your uh, the way that you handle it. I like your view on it. Uh, it's, it's definitely... Closer yeah, to the, lab- uh, the labels are kind of tricky, right? It's yeah. dangerous and isolate. It's it can I, be isolationist, but at the end of the day, I mean, for <laughs> I guess self promotion purposes, you need to call it something or else no one sure. will understand what you're talking about. No, absolutely, I I, I totally I, yeah, I agree with that. And, and I uh, mean with with anarchism too, the way. It, I, I define it in many different ways, but um, recently I've been thinking about the concept of how the difference between anarchists or that label or people who claim to be anarchists in this community is all the progressive liberal status types, even though we don't like them, even though we disagree with them, we still want them to have their freedom. That's the difference between us and them because they don't want us to have that. They hate us. And the, they actually want something done about it. We hate them too, but we still want them to have their <laughs> rights and freedom. And we would not care if they lived freely and did their own thing at all, as long as it doesn't affect us. Sure. Do you go Absolutely. by a particular kind of anarchy? Like, like there's always yeah, um, anarcho and communist syndicalist. I, I like I like the older term of individualist anarchist. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah, I like that one. Um, I'm a huge fan of Anson Belgarigu, and he kind of, I'm sure Anne Rand must have read him because he talks about socialism in, an, in a very individualistic way. You know, he sure. says there is only the self, um, and there is no, there's no social good, there is no you know, public property, there is no shared common good. All of that 